Okay, so we've seen that you can use the timeline in Photoshop and it can transition for you automatically, generate frames that move in between one frame and the other. And all I've done is, is move between effects and move between opacities. And so you can see how just the opacities change between the layers. So 73% there, 58% there, and all of that's automated, 44% there. But it's all done in just computerized steps, right? Because I said I wanted five in-betweens, it just moved it 20% in opacity each time until it was 100%. And then I can go in and program each frame by frame animation in the timeline by turning layers on and off or adjusting the opacity by hand or even changing their layer style, you know, their blending mode. So here I turn the nostril on, here I turn the nostril on. Now I can take a panel that's already been programmed so these are called frames. I can take a frame that's already been programmed from the different layer options and I can duplicate it and then move it. So I have it there, there, and now there. And now I can turn the nose on for this layer so that it's off twice, on twice, off twice, on twice, even though the gradation is different. So then I can loop it, right? But you'll see that it jump cuts in the gradation, even something simple. So if I play it through forever, oops, why does it keep doing that? Hmm, annoying. So if I play it through, for, ah, what are you doing? <laughs> I'm just trying to click the drop down next to once and change it to forever, but it keeps opening this screen up. Okay, so change it from once to forever. You'll see the jump cut that happens right at the end. And so how can I transition that? So this is where it gets tricky because you're trying to control each of your elements, right? And really these in-betweens are only made for, for major shifts. So this is where you can get into some trouble. I'll, I'll show you another example. If I make a new frame and I just only use this at 100%, and then I make a new frame that matches that, but I move that layer. I don't change the layer, but I just move its position to the corner. Right? You'll notice that the layer doesn't change in each frame. So you can actually change the position of your layer based on your, your keyframe. So now if I select both of them and make five in-betweens that change both the opacity, the effects, and the layer, and the position, it will animate what's called a movement tween. So now it moves for me. But then the problem becomes, it's a very even, timing of movement. So then if I go back and I want to alter that layer a little bit, remember if I change the layers, once there's a frame outputted, it's going to change all the layers. So if I add something to it, that's going to be now on all the layers, whether they're moving or not. And then sometimes we move something kind of accidentally.
and then it will kind of blink on and off, or sometimes it will accidentally get animated as we tween it. So if I take that and then tween that with the layer next to it, you'll see how that, that little uh, offset effect will move with it. So all of these different tools are available to us in Photoshop. But because they're automating, it's really hard to then kind of transition and add things the way we want because we didn't build them ourselves. The computer built them for us. But they are fun to play with. And as you get more comfortable, it will make more sense when to use them and for what purpose. But ultimately, having control of every pixel and every frame is what you're looking for whether you have the computer create it for you or not. So the next step then is let's say, okay, I have 20 frames now. This is my finished animation. How do I make a storyboard out of it? There is a really handy trick in Photoshop that makes making your storyboards a lot easier. And that is that once you're done with your animation and you're happy with it, in the timeline window, there are options. And those op one of those options is flatten frames into layers. So if I click on flatten frames into layers, it will generate for me just like what we did uh, putting into GIF Maker, it will generate for me all 20 frames as individual layers. It puts them on top of all of our asset layers. So the animation still works perfectly. And it just has all of these frames to generate it. But what that allows us to do is now we can just say, okay, from frame one to frame 20, frame 10 is in the middle. But when I just did that, it turned on frame 10 for this keyframe. So here is my tip when you're working with the timeline tool, once you've, um, kind of saved your animation and outputted your animation. And I can show you how to do that. So in my version of Photoshop, you go to save for web and you get the, the GIF options. And then you can save it. So once you're done with that, my, op, your, my uh, advice is to then select all of your timeline frames and drag them to the trash so that then you can start editing your, your layers without affecting your animation frames. Otherwise, they start to affect each other, which gets really confusing. So if I want frame 10 to be my middle frame, there it is. Now I know it's the right size. You know, it's eight by eight inches by 72 pixels per inch. So now I simply go to canvas size, just like we do in Photo P, and I change it to 30 inches wide by 40 inches tall. And I grow it from the center. That is the only way in a raster program like Photo P or Photoshop, to truly center an image is to grow around it. Okay, then I'm going to fill the background 
I'm going to go ahead and delete everything underneath my frames. I'm going to fill a background layer with white the same way I would in Photopea. So edit fill white. So this is just reviewing for you how to make your refined storyboard. 30 by 40 inches. I'm going to go ahead and close the timeline so I have more space. And then I'm going to turn, in, turn on my, my grid. And I do that by going to View and clicking next to Show Grid, which I can toggle on and off with Command Apostrophe. And by showing the grid, I'm going to move one, two, three, four. Um, boxes of the grid on each side. Now that's because this grid is based on inches, not based on pixels. So in photo P, I said do five boxes. One, two, three, four. Because that's a grid based on pixels, not based on inches. One, two, three, four. So what I gave myself is on a 30 by 40 sheet, I gave myself one inch border all the way around. Then I can turn off the grid and I'm left with my guides giving me the template for where to put all the other frames. And then I can turn on frame one. And as long as I have auto select unchecked, it's like having a stack of cards. And out of 20 frames, I can pick the ones I want to take up my different slots. Like dealing out cards. And I can decide on, on differences each time as well. And then once I get past the middle frame, they're going to show up on top. So it's like dealing from a, a deck of cards in the middle of the, of the format. All right, and that shows what my animation does in a storyboard. So the timeline tool makes that e pretty easy. So let me go back to the beginning and let me use those tools now just to do some simple animating and show you how quickly it can be done once you're happy with it. Uh, just for expediency, I'm not gonna crop it into a square. So I'm going to use the timeline tool. I'm going to create a frame animation. I'm going to set my first panel as this. Then I'm going to make a new frame. And I'm going to set it to be the extreme opposite. So it toggles between these two. And then I'm going to select them both and choose three frames to add in between. I'm going to set the timing of all of them to my default, which is 0.3 seconds. And then I'm going to animate them. And then I can also uh, reverse the order using the options here. 